students fail to decipher the syllabus in UPSC. By following a cluster approach, we will be dividing the geography of the syllabus in such a manner that it will be very much convenient and comfortable for you. One day matram, welcome to Insemble. I am Amal Sarkar. In today's video, we will be studying about the syllabus of economic geography. Economic geography is an important part of part 2 of paper 1. Questions of at least uh, 3 to 5 questions are asked. Most of the questions are static and the but dynamics part of you know inserting the current affairs will fetch you extra marks. So let us see the syllabus. World economic development, measurement and problems. So the concept, there is a concept of economic growth which is a unidimensional, it is talking out all about the economics part and there is a concept of economic development which is a multidimensional concept which is in, encompassing not only the economic dimension but also the society, uh, social dimension, the political dimension and other dimensions. Let us see a question. Question number one, examine the spatial patterns of development disparity prevailing in the world. So, as we know different regions are having different development, different stages of development, even the development is not the same in a singular region. So, the question is, it is asking you that you have to examine the different regions are having different development. Why is it so? The development of Europe is very different from Africa. So, there is a, there's a spatial pattern of development and due to this spatial pattern different stages of development there is a disparity in the different regions. So, you have to explain that. Question number 2. Distinguish between the concept of growth and development. As I discussed you have to explain the concept of economic growth and economic development. Let us move on to the next topic world, re world resources and their distribution. As we know, resources are precious. The difference, say, let's say, uh, the case of coal. Coal is available in certain pockets of the world, but it, but it is not available everywhere. Similarly, crude oil. It is available in certain pockets, but not available in all the pockets of the world. So, all these minerals are. There's a reason. That, there's a reason that minerals are formed in certain pockets. So, we need to understand the basic concept and its distribution. Let us see an example. Give an account of marine resources and discuss the present day utilization. So, you need to first get two topics in this question. First, you have to give an account of the marine resources available uh, and their second that is the first part and the second part is their utilization. As we know, a resource can be used but in a better way if there is an advance, advancement of technology. Like take an example of shale gas. Shale gas was not used until some years ago but it is used now because there is an advancement of technology. Similarly, uh, seabed nodules. As we know India has been allotted a huge mineral resources in the Indian Ocean by Seabed Authority. So, but in seabed, in the polymetallic nodules, present in the seabed but we do not have the technology at present to use it commercially. So that is the second part discuss their present day utilization. There will be many resources and all these resources will be depending on the advancement of technology for its effective use. Okay, Let us move, move on to the next part energy crisis and limits to growth. Let us take a question. The intensity of energy crisis varies regionally explained. So, as we know, we live in a world where the population is increasing, the demand of energy is also increasing and the limited natural resources are diminishing. In this world, there is a need of greater uh, depend, uh, dependence of renewable source of energy. Hence, the world is moving in that direction, phasing out the coal. Uh, power plants, great reliance on solar energy, wind energy, we have dedicated programs for that. 
सो द क्वेश्चन ऑफ एनर्जी क्राइसिस विल बी हॉवरिंग अराउंड दीज एरिया सो लाइक दिस इन इन दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर दे आर आस्किंग यू द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ एनर्जी क्राइसिस विच इज ऑन अ रीजनल बेसिस लेट सी द एनर्जी क्राइसिस इन एफ्रीका विल बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम यूरोप से लेट एस से इन एग्जाम्पल एट इंडियन लेवल इन डिफरेंट स्टेट्स द एनर्जी क्राइसिस इज डिफरेंट बट दिस पेपर इज नो यू हैव एड्रेस द एनर्जी क्राइसिस एट द ग्लोबल लेवल देन क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव राइट अ नोट ऑन द लिमिट्स टू ग्रोथ दे वॉज अ क्लब ऑफ रोम अ क्लब ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल मैन हु प्रिपेयर अ बुक एक्चुअली इट वॉज इन फॉर्म ऑफ अ रिपोर्ट लेटर पब्लिश एज अ बुक कॉल्ड लिमिट्स टू ग्रोथ इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू so the thing about the special what thing about this limits to growth is that they at at that moment of moment of time they predicted the the future world by having different stimulations they took some variables like population pollution uh, industrialization consumption and based on these variables they had different stimulations these stimulations were different worlds depending on what we do so questions have been asked on this matter a question can be asked what is the present day applicability of this theory let's move on to the next topic agriculture inputs and productivity we will be taking this topic in great details in indian agriculture the next topic is world agriculture typology of agricultural regions what does typology means typology means classification so world agriculture classification of different agricultural regions so this classification has to be based on the different inputs and outputs so the input can be the the farm labor the intensity the for the intensity of not only humans but also the economic cost similarly animals how they are used then the outputs based on these inputs and outputs the most famous theory is given by will say the most important theory was given by will say and he classified the world into 12 different uh, agriculture regions explaining their characteristics we will taking in a next series and explaining the theories also for now on we'll just stick to the syllabus then the next topic is food security food and nutrition problems see food security when we see food security two things come to our mind is the quantity and the quality of food the problem in india is is the quality or the quantity the problem is of the quality because due to the quality there are different deficiencies in our children world global hunger index every year india's rank is falling down even india's rank is much worse than its neighbors so when there is nutrition deficiency there will be stunting wasting and other things among children Be- what why does children infants are most affected because they are in a growing stage not only physically but also at a mentally level at a mental level that there is the development of the brain so when we are discussing food security so there are different dimensions so what are the trends what are the causes what are the remedies so questions will be asked you know either to one or more dimension of food security then the food and nutrition problems so you need to understand and not only the challenges of the of india and the developing countries but also cite the examples of current reports then the next topic is famine causes effects and remedies what is famine famine is a condition where there is lack of food in a large area which results in the death of people so famine can be due to it can be man made it can be natural what are the causes of natural it can be due to floods it can be due to droughts it can be due to uh, say 
forest fires or fires. So what can be the causes of anthropogenic or man-made reasons? It can be war, it can be grabbing of land of poor peasants, it can be grabbing of land. It can be due to maladministration. It can be due to poor distribution of food. If their public distribution system is poor, then it will lead to a lot of leakages and the required targeted population will not be able to you know, get the benefit of the PDS. Hence, it can lead to food security problems and if there is a greater problem of PDS like in what, what happens in African countries like when there is a conflict between different ethnic groups, there will be famine conditions. Okay, let us see some examples. Give an account of food security issues in the developing countries. Question number 9. Man induced famines are becoming more common than nature induced ones. Comment. So, you have to give a brief of you know, what are the man-made and the, what are natural famines and why man-made famines are becoming more common. It is due to, due to the dis reasons we discussed just now and you have to cite examples. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. World industry location patterns and problems and patterns of world trade. So, there are some industries uh, at certain parts of the world. Let us say the uh, eastern coast of USA, it is highly industrialized. So what are the reasons why it is industrialized? There is availability of raw materials, there is a well, trans uh, well connected transport system, then there is availability of water resources, then there is a ready made market. So these, then there is ready made uh, insurance, banking and other facilities available. So when this industry, there are some reasons, natural reasons, natural reasons and also uh, man-made reasons because when there is, there is a accumulation of both these things, it only, it only, it is only then, then the industry is able to be established. Let us see an example. Location significance of Rotterdam in European economy. So why Rotterdam is important? Rotterdam is a very famous port. It is connecting, is well connected to the other regions of Europe and North America. So it is a hub of different industrial clusters. It is a hub of petrochemicals and different chemicals. And from there, the different products which are uh, in imported from Northern America are distributed to different uh, nations of Europe. The next topic is patterns of world trade. See the question will on this topic will be very much current oriented. Let us see an example. Analyze the causes of changes in pattern of world trade. So when the, there is a question of pattern and, and there is a change in pattern. So you have to you know, give a timeline and you know temporal dimension you have to cite examples. Let us say of South Asia, the amount of trade which we had 20 years back and the amount of trade which we have now is different because the amount of trade has increased. Similarly, for Africa and uh, Europe, the amount of trade of developing countries is increasing while that of developed countries is, uh, most of the developed countries are decreasing. So, you have to give an not only this uh, uh, observation, but you have to give the reason of the change of trade pattern. So for today, we will be stopping at discussing the syllabus of economic geography. In our next video, we will be discussing the syllabus of a particular chapter and I will cite you examples in order to explain you how to read the topic. Thank you. To have more such discussions and analysis, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos.